DCME series with a live case transmission. Today's focus is again on left main bifurcation and the live teaching case is from Siriraj Hospital, Thailand. The date stem today is the 28th July, Friday, 3 p.m. Singapore time. This event is endorsed by the Singapore Cardiac Society PCI chapter, accredited for CME points by EBEC in collaboration with Medtronic. My name is Jack, uh, your chair and host uh, today from Singapore, past president of the APSC. We're very privileged to have Sirius uh, Raj Hospital transmit the live case transmission for, uh, for teaching today. I also like to welcome our esteemed speakers, Professor Goran Stankovic from Serbia. He's going to talk about how do we apply results from left main bifurcation trials to real life practice from EBC main Rolex to KISS studies. Professor Aaron Wong, uh, my good colleague from Singapore, is going to talk about a very interesting topic. How do we actually do left main uh, bifurcation stenting without doing intravascular imaging? His tips and tricks. Our operators include Professor Natawood, uh, the director of the Cath Lab at Siriraj Hospital, uh, Thailand. He's going to be assisted by his uh, good colleagues, Dr. Korakov, as well as Dr. Paria. Our panelists include Dr. Kwatieli from Singapore, Dr. Fauzi Yaya from Indonesia, Dr. Park Dok Woo from South Korea, Dr. Sydney Lowe from Australia. Uh, some housekeeping uh, uh, notes, this content is copyrighted by the APSC. The views and opinions expressed belongs to the faculty members and doesn't necessarily represent those of the APSC. This webinar is currently live streamed by APSC Facebook and YouTube pages. CME points will be submitted for those who are connected throughout the full duration, answering a survey post event by email. So let's get started and I'd like to welcome Professor Stankovic to share with us uh, trial results applying to real life practice. Prof. Uh, Stengovic, please. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Tan, for the kind invitation. It's really a privilege for me. And uh, let me share my slides. Can you see my screen? I hope. Uh... Uh, maybe full screen. Yeah, that's good. Is it okay? Good. Yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you. Thank you very you. much again. So Prof Tan asked me to update actually from the last Europe PCR meeting in May, uh, results of the left main trials as well as non-left main KISS trial. And these are my uh, conflicts of interest. Uh, I just briefly say that since the beginning of bifurcation PCI treatment, we have multiple randomized studies comparing one versus two stand strategy, none of them actually show the benefit with systematic two stand strategy, even with DBC2 in 2016, uh, with large true bifurcation squat was not superior to uh, provisional arm, but the long-term follow-up actually showed worse outcome regarding two stand strategy in the initial Nordic one and BBC one. At five years of follow-up, uh, you see difference in all-cause mortality in favor of less metal. Uh, left main bifurcation has specific anatomical characteristics, like the angulation, which is uh, around 80 degrees. Then we have a large caliber discrepancy between left main and the LAD. Area is prone to calcification. Ostium could be involved with fibrosis. And side branch is circumflex. It's never small trifurcations occur in about 10%. And what are the results? Last year, Prof. Seruis published 10-year all-cause mortality in the syntaxis, uh, comparing impact of bifurcation presence as well as the stenting technique. And what is important in that publication is that percutaneous treatment of bifurcation actually at long-term, 10 years of follow-up, results again in higher risk of overall mortality, while for CABG there is absolutely no impact of bifurcation versus no bifurcation on long-term mortality. And again, we have a replica from the non-left main studies. If we compare single stent versus two stent strategy, 
again, there is a strong trend for higher overall mortality with more metal, with two stains. And if we divide in first five years versus five to 10 years of follow-up, there is higher risk at the longer term follow-up with two stand technique for the all cause mortality. And these are the reasons why European Bifurcation Club recommends provisional as the standard approach for most bifurcations, including the left main, but it's a treatment philosophy, not a single stand technique. We actually recommend to approach bifurcations in stepwise manner, <clears throat> add layers of complexity as necessary, but stop when we achieve good result, whether it's one, or end up with two stands whenever it's necessary. And this stepwise layer provisional standing is described step by step in our consensus documents from 2002, part one provisional, part two, two stand strategies. And these are the five steps that we de defined. Standing of the main vessel according to distal main vessel diameter, mandatory pot, wire exchange, plus minus kissing, plus minus repot. And if second stent is needed, then we recommend to go with the second stent. Regarding the provisional strategy, we have novelty, the KISS trial, it's provisional stenting in bifurcations. What is the benefit of side branch intervention? It's, I have to say, non-left main bifurcations. Bernard Chevalier is primary investigator. And the study was designed to compare in any non-left main bifurcation except 001 strategy of no side branch intervention versus side branch intervention with either kissing balloon technique or pot side pot. Importantly, stents were treated, uh, stents that were used with result onyx, sized according to distal reference, and there was systematic recommendation to do pot. After pot, randomization was done to no intervention versus intervention. And the primary endpoint was the rate of periprocedural infarction using ART2 definition within 48 hours, defined by 70 times increase in troponin or 35 times upper limit of normal with additional criteria. And these are the main results. Non-inferiority of no side branch intervention was met. 4.1 versus 5.7%. And within the control group, there was, of course, some trend for lower rate of MI with pot sat pot versus kissing balloon inflation. Of course, as expected, in no side branch intervention, there was shorter procedure time, less fluoral, less radiation, less contrast, and acute gain seems to be slightly smaller if no side branch intervention is done. So the uh, authors of this study conclude that provisional stenting in routine non-left main bifurcation using Resolutonix DES is associated with good short-term outcome, 30-day outcome was presented in the absence of any side branch intervention. If we select the stent according to distal reference and if the side branch is patent after POP. Of course, there is less procedure time, contrast media, exposure to X-ray, and the rest requirement for double stenting. Mid-term, one-year follow-up is necessary to confirm this potential benefit. Now we go to uh, Europe-ECR, to left main studies. First, EBC main, David Hildig smith PI presented three-year results. Uh, for those who, who, who don't... Uh, no, the study EBC main was a randomized comparison of stepwise provisional strategy versus systematic dual stand strategy for true left main bifurcation disease with the Resolutonics DES. Importantly, circumference had to be more than 275. 30 centers uh, randomized 457 patients, and the primary endpoint was all cause mortality, all MI and TLR at one year. Uh, Resolutonix was selected because of broad size metrics. And these are the demographics, 70 years on average. Uh, syntax score 23, lower than DK crash 5. And procedural summary showing, of course, less stent and uh, less stent length uh, with uh, 
reduced uh, procedural time, fluoroscopy time, and radiation with stepwise provisional. These are procedural steps. So pot 85%, kissing 90% in provisional. And I think the key finding in provisional strategy, second stand was needed in 22%. So if we start provisional, one out of five patients receive a second stand. In systematic dual, it's important to say that predominant strategy was the ORTAP. These are previous one year results. No difference in overall primary endpoint, mortality, MI, and revascularization with some numerical trend. And these are three-year EBC main results. Again, no difference in primary endpoint, 23% versus 29. There is no difference at three-year in mortality, MI, and there is almost double uh, target lesion revascularization, which attains statistical significance. 8% versus 14%. Here we put uh, together one year and three years, and we see increase in the event rate in two stand strategy. These are Kaplan Mayer curves for primary endpoint and for target lesion revascularization, which attain statistical significance. So, David concluded that uh, there are good outcomes at three years with bifurcation PCI of the left main. No difference in three-year primary endpoint between the groups, almost twice as much TLR in systematic dual stenting. Only one out of five in provisional group requires second stent. And I think the key message, it's not necessary to decide number of stents before you start procedure. Uh, largest up-to-date register in the left main contemporary was Rolex was presented by Giuseppe Tarantini, PI. This is final two-year results of the Rolex. 450 patients, mainly Italian Portuguese science, PCI again with uh, Resolutonics. Uh, aim of the study to assess safety and efficacy with the latest generation of stent. Criteria similar to Excel and primary endpoint target lesion failure at one year. Similar to DK Crash 5, composite of cardiac mortality, target vessel MI, and ischemia driven TLR. One third diabetes, 50% uh, stable in China, syntax score 24, uh, IGUS and OCT were used in 45% of cases, and the replica of EBC main single stand strategy, 77%, two stands, one out of five. 23%, final pot 90%, final kiss 64%. These are priorly published data at one year of follow-up, extremely low rate of target lesion failure, uh, cardiac MI and uh, TLR. And these are new data, two-year outcomes with minimal increase, TLF 5.0%, one more cardiac death, one MI and one ischemia driven TLR. But very important, if we go to sub-analysis, angio-guided ways to image guiding, we see significant reduction in primary endpoint, as well as MI and target lesion revascularization. And what is also important, if we use angio-guidance compared to intravascular imaging, we are actually able in 50% of cases to use extra large vessel stand platform, and that's probably one of the explanations for the improvement of the results. So uh, Giuseppe concluded that uh, Rolex is the largest prospective registry. A two-year follow-up confirmed good safety and efficacy, and the use of intercoronary imaging lowered the incidence of the primary endpoint, and they are planning to extend follow-up to five years. Just briefly, EBC2, five-year follow-up, so non-left main, Provisional versus culot was also presented at PCR. To remind you, 200 patients randomized to provisional versus systematic culot, mainly LAD diagonal bifurcation, no difference in primary endpoint at uh, uh, 12 months in 2016. But similarly, we see 16% of side branches in provisional needed second stand. Again, we see shorter procedure and less radiation and cost. Uh, 
And this is five year follow up, primary endpoint, all cause mortality, all MI and TBR. And we see again at five years, no difference between provisional versus culotte. And uh, even if we stratify the length of disease of the side branch less than 10 versus more than 10, P4 interaction is uh, 0 0.34. So no difference, no different outcome if we stratify by the length. So routine culotte did not improve five-year maze beyond provisional in non-left main true bifurcations. And there is no interaction with the length of the side branch. Again, only 16% of provisional required second stand. So I would like to conclude that good outcomes at three years with bifurcation left main PCI stand were reported good outcomes at five years with bifurcation non-left main PCI. There is no difference in three-year or five-year death, MI, and TLR between provisional and systematic two-stand strategy. Almost twice as much TLR in the systematic dual-stand group in the EBC main and only one out of five in provisional group requires second stand. So again, to repeat, it's not necessary to decide the number of stands before we start procedure. We have definitely better outcome with routine use of intravascular imaging. And to conclude, we recommend the provisional strategy to be the default approach for bifurcation disease. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Goran. Uh, again, very insightful uh, series of data that you just shared. So now we're going to have some time. Actually, good, very good timing, Goran. Thanks a lot um, to discuss. And uh, I'd like to start off uh, perhaps with Professor Park from Asa Medical. I, I think the lead center in Asia for left main uh, PCI. Are you convinced by this set of European data presented by Professor Goran to say that Left main standing is a philosophy advocating provisional versus upfront prejudge to stand for true bifurcation. Professor Park, uh, your advice. Okay, thank you for uh, inviting this uh, wonderful meeting. I'm very uh, pleased to hear the uh, Professor Koran's uh, very nice lecture. And uh, uh, first of all, I uh, overall I agree the uh, very nice result uh, in the, you know, uh, very wonderful trial, EBC main trial and the prior many, many trial conducted in European country. So uh, I think the main point, I 100% agree and provisional stand is a concept, you know, a strategy concept rather than technique. And sometimes we, we're going to plan to do initially provisional uh, standing and the, during the procedure and the situation was a change. Sometimes uh, suck osteum was uh, severely compromised. That there was some uh, uh, reduced blood pressure. We should do uh, you know dynamic change to the uh, dual standing. So uh, my uh, the important point we not to do too much fix in the one strategy. Even though we are initially planned to provisional standing during the procedure, we can really exchange it to upfront to standing. So also, uh, uh, although in the EBC main, a study showed the provisional standing, the two year result would be, uh, seems to be much better than the uh, initial two stand technique. And uh, I think in some case, uh, some different, you know, uh, looks like a very ugly suck ostium, lesion length more than 10. And so we call them the very complex anatomy in the suck ostium. And we can treat the perfectly just the provisional single stand crossover. And after final kissing balloon dilation, suck ostium, there's going to be some very severe dissection. We require some, you know, dual stenting also. And the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the China data shows the, uh, initial dual stenting is much better than provisional stenting. So given that still left main stenting, there's some data is a comforting, comforting result. So our philosophy is that we, are, in Asan, even in Asan, we prefer the provisional stenting, but this, uh, during the procedure, we can adapt the dynamic change of the stenting procedure that is our daily practice in left main PCI in Asan Medical Center. Thanks to Professor Park. So provisional is preferred. I think it's supported by data, but be dynamic to changes. Uh, Sini, maybe I can uh, go to you and ask you the question of provisional technique then. 
Um, uh, Goran actually highlighted that you can finish off with just a pot or kiss. What's your preference in true bifurcation if you're going for a uh, provisional approach? Do you pre-dilate? Do you finish with kiss or just a pot um, for left main bifurcation, Sydney? So for left main bifurcation, uh, a lot depends on the disease. If it's a true left main distal bifurcation, then I, I think I tend to do a kissing balloon. Uh, if um, there's not a lot of disease and circumflex and a stent crossover is your strategy, uh, provisional, and it looks okay, then I don't interrupt it at all. Now, I do imaging in uh, routinely in my left main uh, PCIs, uh, distal left main. Um, so essentially, either IVUS or OCT, either one, uh, it's acceptable to me in, in that region, probably favor IVUS for an osteo, but uh, I would not routinely do the kissing dilatation of the side branch. And I don't routinely dilate it before I stent the, uh, a crossover. Um, I think the data and the lecture was fantastic because it really makes us very comfortable with what we've been doing for a long time, which is try to do a provisional strategy. But also, at least my thinking of it, uh, for most people, if the bifurcation is complicated, like definition two, whatever you like to say, there's not a lot of penalty if you can execute a well-trodden two-stent strategy. So if you're good with a DK crush or you're good with a culotte, whatever you like to do, you can execute it um, with imaging, particularly my favorite, uh, my favorite favorite procedure uh, approach. If you can execute it well, and you've checked with imaging as well, then I think that there's no penalty to a good two centrality to get the patient optimum result. Because I think that from what I, my understanding is in those trials is that if you're doing provisional, that concept of bailing out if you're having a side branch problem may be difficult for some operators. It's somewhat easier if you have a well-trodden two-stent strategy to secure everything in the side branch and the main branch. And then having to rescue it through a stent may be complicated for some operators. And that may be, even though it's 20, up to 20%, may be fought with technical issues were, and, uh, and the mace that may be attached to it, uh, to the procedure. So um, I guess if it's complicated, we'd say, look, just do your execute your favorite two-stent strategy. You know you can execute and get an oper op uh, optimized result. Thanks, uh, Sydney. Maybe I can go to Jelly because Sydney mentioned about intravascular imaging. You saw Goran's uh, 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 trial update saying that IVI in the registry actually did show a difference. So would you say that it's mandated that future even left main studies and trial need to have mandated intravascular imaging uh, when you talk about different strategies, uh, Jelly? Mm, yeah, hi, Jack. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think I do agree that um, in contemporary left main PCI imaging is crucial. I also have to say that because of my, my youth, uh, this is this is how we are trained. So I think for interventionists of generation, we do a left main PCI, we will feel um, very difficult if you do not end off with a problem, um assessment. Yeah, but I think cases, for example, where a uh, patient is uh, unstable, those are the situations where I, I would omit the imaging. But yes, in most of my left-hand PCI, I definitely think that imaging is uh, is uh, crucial to ensure that you have done a good job. Thanks, um, uh, Jelly. So I think if you can, I would think it's near mandated, but uh, highly recommended, I would say. I think in uh, go runs, maybe can conclude later, just before we end on this discussion. What is a recommendation for imaging as well? Fauzi, I, I go to you next. Uh, you know, whenever we do a complex left main bifurcation, what is your recommended routine for follow-up? Do you look actively for ischemia? Do you recap this group of patients? What, what is the practice uh, in Indonesia? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Jack. Uh, very wonderful and fantastic uh, uh, lecture from Prof. Gorans. I fully agree that I think that uh, EBC uh, recommendation is stepwise layer professional a standard approach. In my center uh, is about uh, ninety percent using a stepwise uh, layered uh, professional strategy, and you, we use a lot of DCB in uh, uh, in treating the the side brands. Uh, so it is, uh, and then regarding the follow up. Uh, first, we are asking the patient actually for six uh, months to come 
uh, to have a follow up in left main PCI. Uh, if uh, there is some some disease that we are looking for, because if uh, if we are seeing the disease at that point, if there is a moderate disease, we are asking to have a FFR or uh, have a imaging. Uh, no, a functional study, non-invasive or uh, invasive functional study. That's the point. Thanks, thanks, Fauzi. So, yeah, Fauzi highlighted a practice of routine uh, follow-up angiogram KIV physiology. So now I go to go on to conclude all the comments that he has heard. Uh, we heard about the technique differences, imaging guidance, and even in Asan will say a preferred uh, professional approach uh, with rapid switch. Can, can you summarize your thoughts uh, and uh, what is yeah. actually in the guidelines? Yeah. yeah, what we published actually is that DK Crush 5 and DBC main are complementary. And we have different subsets of complexity in two studies, plus definition two, which help us see the whole spectrum of disease extent in the circumflex. And in DK Crush 5, the length of the lesion of the circ was above 16 millimeter. I think it's not rational to expect that with simple ballooning, you can fix 16 millimeter long disease. So I believe uh, the extent of disease and complexity of this left main determines the strategy. Our approach, our philosophy is to start provisional, either stenting towards the LAD or towards the circ, inverted provisional, depending on the estimated risk of losing the side branch. And then we do pot and kiss. And then if we need second stent, we put second stent as a T-tap or culotte. So this is what we recommend. So for us, second stent in provisional is not a failure and is not a rescue. It's actually the last, the fifth step of provisional strategy. And most of us prefer either culotte, T or TAP, and these are the uh, individual selections according to vessel size, angulation, plug burden, plug distribution. So provisional as a strategy is the choice. Stenting first the more severe lesion, either towards the circ or LAD, and with recommended intravascular imaging. Uh, we do it uh, routinely, but we are awaiting in one month from now, we will have October, which is specifically dedicated uh, study uh, to be presented at European Society of Cardiology Congress in Amsterdam. After that, it's a clinical uh, endpoint, hard events, death and MI. And if that study is positive, then we really go in the direction to make uh, mandatory imaging for complex left main disease. But we need to wait just one more month. So at the moment, as you said, we strongly recommend use of imaging in complex bifurcations. And if Illumian 4 and October and Octavus uh, coming from uh, uh, Korea, if three studies with image guidance are positive and all three will be presented in Amsterdam, then I think we will shift gear and include imaging in the consensus as probably mandatory. Very strong words, mandatory. So I look forward to a month's uh, time. We, We're yeah, right on we time need now. to see the results. We don't know. Yeah, we, we need to see the results. Yes, it's always uh, data driven. Thanks, Goran, for those concluding remarks. You, we delivered it right on time. It's exactly 3.30. So now we're going to shift to the cath lab. Um, cath lab, can you share screen and go live, please, in Siriraj Hospital? And we would love to hear from, uh, can we share screen now? Yes, uh, and seeing the handsome faces of Professor Natawood. Uh, Natawood, can you say something and introduce your team? Yes, can you hear me, Jack? Yes, yeah. hear you. Hi, Hi. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks uh, for inviting us uh, for doing the live case. Uh, have to thanks APSCs and also Metronic uh, for uh, educational support here. Um, we have the quite challenging case here. Uh, we have uh, initial case, but patient have sepsis, so we have to alternate the case. And uh, I have my team helping me up over here. Dr. Korokot uh, is uh, my co-operator. Uh, I have my fellows, uh, Dr. Song Pop, uh, 
uh, international fellows. Uh, we also have the Natwara and Nutjali uh, for scrub and uh, circulation, and uh, excellent uh, Miss Pisaka and Himodinamika, Miss Atanida. Uh, I would like Dr. Korokot maybe introduce the case and uh, give some presentation. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, uh, we can hear you. Just give me okay. a Yeah, go ahead. Please. Okay, next slide, please. This is a case of uh, 56 years old male with DM dyslipidemia and active smoker for 30 pack years. And his presentation was a uh, progressive dyspnea and on the exertion with acute decompensated heart failure for two weeks. And next slide, please. Uh, his chest X-ray demonstrates uh, increased cardiothoracic ratio, that's mean the head and there's some fluid in the curly B line. And the ECGs show in time ventricular conduction delay and diffuse ST segment deflations. Next slide, please. And echocardiogram demonstrates severely LV dysfunctions. The LV ejection fraction was about 20% with the we hypertension from the left heart disease. Next slide, please. This, uh, this uh, is the Medication include the anti therapy and the medication for his LV dysfunction that consists of four pillars of the GDMT and his medication for anti-DM. Next slide, please. And fortunately, after the GDMT, the, his LV function was uh, improved from the 20% to above uh, 38%. So the uh, initial when he came in with the heart failure, uh, he was not on any medication. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the, our cardiologist put him on medication. We yeah. get angiogram last week. And then so we uh, bring him back after angiogram to uh, follow up on the echocardiogram that you see can, here. Can, you can see the miracle of the, <laughs> the TDMT. <laughs> Even the EKT turned from the left to the uh, nearly normal EKT. Just few weeks. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and this uh, angiogram demonstrates RCA was totally occluded with the uh, bridging collateral. Next slide, please. And uh, already you can see the critical left main stenosis and the borderline LED disease at the LED diagonal. Uh, the diagonal is uh, not quite big, but it's is up high at the lateral wall. And you can see the Collateral from left to the right system, and you and this view you can see the circumflex system that have the some stenosis at the proximal part of the OM. Yeah, so through research, uh, through circumflex is small and occluded, but uh, they have the um, it's good sizable obtuse margin. You know, uh, yep. uh, that's applied uh, the uh, left. Uh, Part of the heart. Uh. Yeah, but so the, about the left main bifurcation is the Medina, Medina 111, and we have the syntax score at 36. And after calculate the syntax two score, the score is the, so the recommendation is can we can do CBG or the PCI. Yeah. And this is about 26.28.3. Uh, uh. So would like your opinion to help us, uh, to guide us, uh, what, uh, what should we do? Uh. So this is quite challenging when we see the EF20, we're not quite sure, but uh, when we follow up the echocardiograms, uh, uh, this is uh, improving. So we thought that could be a good case for uh, discussion. We discussed the patient about CBG, but he's prefer PCIs. Uh. So of course, um, now I, I think I'm just holding on to this slide. Maybe uh, uh, Professor Park, is this something that would be a great case for a uh, bifurcation provisional approach uh, stepwise or would this be an upfront two stent in your mind yes yeah so and the, uh, uh, first of all i have a question to how how the operator plan to treat the rca region is rca looks like a cto is a there is no no plan to rca we, we actually plan uh if if i do uh, in regular case uh, i i might try to open up the rca first uh, and then stretching for the left main PCI. But I think we have to switch the case and we got this case last week. So uh, 
uh, we strategy a little bit, but I think I will plan for completely vascularized or RCA afterwards, but not on this side. Mm -hmm. So, but I Professor think Park, can, can I just ask you then? Uh, you asked a very good question, which was my second question actually. So, maybe you can answer that in, in your strategy for such cases, you would open the CTO first. No, no, no. You know, you know, and the first of all, and the this patient's a relatively young patient, and the syntax score is looks like a too much high, 36, and the ejection fraction is quite low. First, uh, I would like uh, uh, recommend the uh, bypass surgery first, and the, you know, EF is less than 40, and the rep main disease, and the, you know, by definition guideline, absolutely, this is class one indication for bypass surgery. So if a patient is refused bypass surgery and uh, there is no chance of the bypass surgery, we should do uh, the left main PCI. I think uh, considering, uh, you know, the suck, suck size and the, I would like to do, do and the, the dual stenting and the systematic the, uh, stenting for suck and LAD in the cross technique. And the, you know, one of the problem, if you, if you do procedure too much complex and it could be, you know, hemodynamics could be, you know, dramatically compromised in such case and the ejection pressure 20%. So I think uh, is uh, if you select uh, left main PCI and the uh, quick procedure is important. Also, if available in Perla or IBP, I, uh, I strongly recommend the uh, MCS assistant uh, left main PCI for such case. Thanks. Thanks for those comments. Uh, Sydney, maybe we go to you. Uh, a few things were brought up. Uh, we all agree that this diabetic uh, patient, triple vessel disease, left main, with poor year should be a surgical case. I think we should push this as a class one. If we were to push a PCI, would you attempt also the left main to start? And what is the MCS support needed or not needed for this case? So look, I I, I uh, agree with all the comments so far, and and our surgeons are very strong here, and so they would have taken the patient, I think, uh, for bypass. But for PCI, if patient refused, then uh, I think the right coronary artery as a procedure is doable. But uh, as to your question, uh, whether or not you would do that before or after you've done the left main, and whether or not you would support the patient. Now uh, we think that during the case, um, we would check. The patient's hemodynamics a little bit. So essentially, we would do a routine right heart catheterization, check the PA saturation, and uh, and we'll we'll see how compromised he is. So, uh, now he's actually improving. So his EF has gone from twenty to thirty eight percent or so, just on medical therapy, and presumably it, most things are viable and the EF will, will improve. So minimizing ischemia time is important, but obviously. If it's not particularly frail from any other respect, um, then uh, it's a bit borderline for uh, mechanical cardiac support. We would we would uh, discuss this at the heart team. And if it's recommended, then we, we, we have it so we, we can actually implant an impeller for the procedure. Once an impeller, impeller is in, then we would probably complete everything. So if an impeller is in, we would do a full revask in the same procedure if we can. So we would do the left main bifurcation diagonal and the right coronary probably in the same sitting. If we're not using MCS, we'll do the left main bifurcation um, and then probably we'll stage the right coronary. So the, the right is actually quite a challenging lesion, I must say. So uh, can I go to Fauzi then? Um, I think what uh, Siraj Hospital did very well, I would think, is the very good optical medical therapy for someone with poor EF. But would you necessarily jump into the angiogram early? And if you do see a left main like this, are you comfortable based on, for example, the revive this is to study to say we still go on medical therapy and wait a while? Or do you need to revascularize such anatomy straight up, uh, Fauzi? Yeah, <laughs> of course, uh, I uh, fully support to revascularize of these such uh, very uh, nasty vessels. So uh, in doing that, uh, I would like to perform complete revas. So in this kind of the strategy, uh, better to, uh, to fix the RCA first and then uh, the left main, which, which is not, uh, I don't think this is quite, quite uh, complex, the left main. 
So we can uh, cross over from the LED to left main and uh, maybe need uh, some kissing balloon to circumflex. Uh, but from the RCA, it is uh, really more complex than the left main. So it needs some, some strategy to, so I'm thinking to fix the RCA and then uh, followed by uh, performing left main PCI. So I, I hope we're not convincing, uh, confusing Nata Wood. I, I can see <laughs> everyone has split opinion. So I get one last one from Prof Goran. Um, MCS, yes or no? Is it uh, still a professional philosophical approach or like DW prefers uh, to have a two stent uh, in the circ? So Goran. Yeah, yeah. thanks Jack. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, we don't need to decide the number of stents in advance. So provisional as a strategy anyway, in this case, CERC is not large. Uh, image guidance strongly recommended. Uh, I think uh, crossover stenting and then KISS and then T or TAP for uh, the obtuse marginal if necessary after predilatation. Uh, there is the option of uh, DCB that was mentioned previously, but definitely 38% uh, for us is not upfront. Uh, mechanical circulatory support. Okay, so we have varying opinions there as well. Now we hear from uh, Nata Wood, uh, what is the recharge hospital gonna do for this case and why? So let uh, us show the angiogram first. Uh -huh. Okay, so we, we agree with the team. I think uh, this patient is uh, high risk, uh, so, um, uh, keeping that uh, EF is uh, dropping and um, also have the occlude of the right. So we prophylaxis uh, start with the balloon pump. Uh, we don't have the um, uh, impeller in Thailand. Uh, so I think uh, in this case, uh, uh, balloon pump is, uh, is more uh, commonly used. Uh, and uh, this is the angiogram. Uh, so we have the disease uh, uh, in the LED up to the left main and also have the quite sizable on the decano uh, and um, it's another picture on this reference view. Not much of calcium, but when we were surprised a little bit when we go in with the IWAS, uh, we see some calcium. And this is the picture of the uh, left main bifurcation. So I think this is a Medina 110, but the, the significant uh, disease in the OM is sizable. So we thought we need to planning for stenting this OM first and then we're going to go with the provisional stent strategy, uh, stent uh, left main to LED and the fixed LED. And if have the chance, we will go uh, uh, do the decanal brand with the DED. Uh, we can show you the imaging data. If we can so switch the one, the yeah, will be the yeah. LED to left main. Uh -huh. Yes, from the LED to the left main here. Okay, Dr. Priya can present. Okay, the first one here. There's a normal set, normal area. And this is where the reference vessel is. Okay, let's look for the lesion all along. You can appreciate it lesion at the three to six o'clock with a mixed plug. And then to the mid LED, you can appreciate it. There's uh, some tight stenosis and fibrocalcific plug. There's some calcium over yeah. here about 180 degrees mm -hmm. and uh, now the diagonals from the left hand is coming in the big diagonal one and this part the proximal LED is look good but with some flux circumferential to the osteum and then you can start from the circumflex here, and this is a distal left, maybe very tight stenosis. Mm -hmm. And, some and calcium yeah, some there. calcium or circumferential. That plug was extend to the osteo of the left main. Mm -hmm. And from this view, look at the distal reference here. Uh, the distal LED, the diameter about uh, from the vessels, EEL is 3.2 over 3.2. So and usually about 8, so maybe 3 or stent uh, up to 30. Huh? Yes. But we need to prep the lesion quite well before putting stent, giving that calcium, uh, superficial calcium. It's yeah. not the 
uh, high uh, calcium score, uh, but uh, because it's not um, uh, 360, uh, but it's circumferential at 180. So yes. we need to prep it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the calcium application is not that too long. And I think I, I agree with the Dr. Wood. And you can the, see some reparation. So that, that means the thickness oh, is not the, uh, not much. Uh, so you can see liberation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the proximal LAD, the vessel's size is about 4.1 over 4.3. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the, the left main size, mm -hmm. the left main quite big at 4.4 mm -hmm. over 4.9. Yes. So and we about, probably can just uh, stenting uh, from the left main using 4.0 up to that diagonal brand, right? Yes. And from the view, as you can see the length of the lesions from the distal level end from here to uh, diagonals, there's a uh, the length of about uh, 30 millimeters from the distal LED to the diagonal and from the diagonal to the circumflex. is about 15 millimeters and the lesions on the left main is playing about uh, 10 millimeters here. So maybe we can put the stent from the distal to the proc to some area proximal to the diagonals, which is about maybe about 34 or more. And then from the proximal LED to the left main, it will take about the 20s, okay. you can, uh, maybe about that. Right. Yeah. So maybe and maybe for all 22, uh, uh, I think uh, Onyx, we have 18 and 22. So maybe 22 and 30. Uh, uh, into the left main and then uh, and then come back and uh, prep the lesion in the mid LED and then the, uh, uh, stenting 3 um 36 or uh, 38. Uh. And from here, uh, for the bifurcation and the circumflex, we should work here. Uh, I don't see that there is a signs of uh, side brand compromise like an eyebrow sign here. Mm -hmm. And also the diagonal, as you can see on the left hand, it look quite uh, clear. There are no disease at the ostium of the, of the diagonal too. So we, we'd like to get again the all information as much as possible from intravascular imaging before uh, starting. And we can go to the circumflex. Uh, yes. Circumflex is quite surprised us. Uh, we, we cannot, it's quite difficult to pass, but we can see why. Uh. So this is a pool from the mid circumflex. As I, then you can see napkin rings over here. Yes. Uh, and then, but uh, this part of the proximal circle to the well left main is fair. So I think based on this strategy, uh, uh, we could uh, do provisional stand technique because the no disease at the ostium of circumflex, but I, I need to prep that circumflex very well. I, I try to prep, uh, try to balloon now to go back with the intravascular imaging. So my plan, I could do, uh, uh, try to stand the circumflex first and uh, maybe uh, everything's uh, OM first, and then uh, we'll do provisional stenting from the left main to LAG, uh, keeping that left main is tight so we can open up and do the pot and then we will go do the mid LED afterwards. Uh -huh. So let's start with the intravascular imaging in the circumflex after we prep the balloon. Uh -huh. So it is engaged a little bit when we're talking. Uh -huh. Sorry, my eyewash can pass. Uh -huh. Sorry, uh, Aaron here. Can, can I just ask the mid LED, is the lesion significant enough? Angiographically, it doesn't look so tight. Um, I think in this patient, oh, what, I would oh, call, what I would do is to keep it simple, patients um, EF low, I, huh? I probably would just um, stem from the, um, the, 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 just then left main, just right at the ostium of the LED um, uh, to the, just, just at the bifurcation. I think there is um, a, a space there for Mark, to, next, the stem. Then, they are Um, we, we could, uh, we plan to do the left main to LED, so we could even uh, uh, finish and then do the FFR and uh, determine significant on that uh, mid LED lesion. Uh. You see intravascular imaging, right? Uh, this is to the search after we prep with the balloon. 
So I think it's uh, we can do uh, sizing uh, the vessel size and try to put the stand, uh, select the stand and uh, put it in. For what I need, nah, diameter that's all right. Mình cho sáu số lên đấy. So um, Nata Wood, I I see that you're you're gone with your IVP for hemodynamic support. Although right, yeah. I think here is I I I can tell why you did it. Uh, but Goran's comment is quite good. It's probably not routine, I guess, for someone who's electively admitted and the EF has shown an improvement for medical mm -hmm. therapy. And you're gone with a provisional approach from the left main LED first, right? And you're going to leave the third lesion as provisional. I see a crack in the neck ring in the circumflex. Right. Size that like oh. What are you doing now, Nata? What, what we uh, are we, uh, we just uh, looking the intravascular imagings and then we uh, select the size of the stand into the circumflex and now uh, in the OM. So now we need to start the stand into OM first because if once we provisional, we cannot go back to that OM. And uh, so we could fix uh, that uh, obtuse too much, you know, as first. Uh, okay. And as so, you can see, we, uh, with balloon, we can crack that calcium. Uh, so let's see, we can pass that stand in. Okay, we got it in. Uh, and uh, my plan, I'm not going to close to that uh, third ostium. Okay. See, Nena. Maybe I have to move up a little bit to cover that uh, calcium uh, approximately. Yes, yeah. Okay, see Nina. Okay, in fact, coming so Okay. Can, can I check back then with uh, some of my panelists, uh, DW, you saw the imaging. Uh, initially, you were thinking about uh, bifurcation, standing, protecting the circumflex OM. Uh, do you agree with this approach? This one, NC. Yes, so yeah. <laughs> I, I think that the operator now doing the uh, uh, pre-standing, the region preparation is... Uh, so... <laughs> Do you do you already put the stand the sucker? Not yeah, yet. there's a already standard the set avoiding the ostium. Um, so and then usually and then you know on the basis uh, of the I would send the suck ostium was uh uh embarbed uh, so if this patient is my case, I would like to do crush technique, yes. Okay, so you're going with a two stand. Um mm. Action. Can we get zero charge to share screen instead? So we can see it full screen. You see full screen, huh? Yeah, now we see you full screen. Hemodynamic, a little bit uh, uh, dynamic. <laughs> yes. uh, when we put the IVAS in that uh, left circumflex, uh, but pressure was dropping a little bit. I have to give him additional dopamine on top. Huh? And um, now we just finished stand the OM. And um, we're going to prep the. Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to prep the lesion in the left main now uh, with using the 4 ONC balloon. Uh. Did you see the angiographic afterwards? Uh? Yeah, it looks, it looks mm -hmm. good. Okay. So Aaron made a comment to say that he will probably just stand the left main uh, to proximal LED and then reassess. Yeah, we, um, we could do that. Uh, and then we can IFFR if we need it. Uh. There is some point of discussion about the IFFR post then because we have collateral flow to RCA. <laughs> Okay. 
effect. So it looks like it's watermelon, slip a little bit. Let's see. And sound, sound, see. Ah, You can see watermelon effect uh, just slip in and slip out. Uh, maybe that calcium is uh, tougher than we thought. Uh. Mm -hmm. Kinshasa, we're going to go slow. One, two. Three, five. This is a, this is non compliant balloon. This is NC balloon. Yeah, for all. NC effect. balloon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It looks like uh, it's it's calcium. It's yeah. calcium. Yeah. Ning song. Sam. The. Kelly, would you use a four NC balloon here, or usually some form of scoring Second, balloon? Huh? Mm, I think I'll probably use some scoring balloon. I'm not sure whether. I think on the imaging, that I, I don't think the calcium oh, was huh? that bad. So maybe it's more of a fibroid thing uh, when huh? it slips around. So I think the score will probably get me to catch the lesion a bit better. Oh, huh? um, see. Uh, okay, now we got it. Okay. Uh, fight uh, sip, sip song. Uh. This, uh. Okay, different. So the calcium uh, surprised us a little bit. <laughs> when the intravascular imaging is less than one. 30, uh, but um, it still cause watermelon effect, but I think we prep it well. Huh? But pressure, you can see, was dropping a little bit during the stenting left main. Huh? Give a test. So I think we're going to uh, do it on one angiogram. Huh? Look at yep. Okay. 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 Ah, send to left main. Lah. See soon. Give song. Lah. So we can start with left main stenting, and then the, we we will check up. Uh, we do the pot afterward. Huh? So we're gonna stay with you. Uh, for now, to watch the left mm -hmm. main stenting and perhaps a pot before we go to the next lecture. Right. So uh -huh. we'll have you show us some tips and tricks here of uh. Left main or still coverage. The deal part check how like that. So the stand you mentioned was going to be a four o twenty two stand. Is that what you've chosen? Now I'm just uh, stand crossover. Huh? Keep the Y into the circumflex. And as in intravascular imaging, I think there's a free of disease in the cells. Huh? Yeah, let's see. This is 4022. This is uh, 4022. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I like to confirm again on the platinum cover ostium in the LAO cordial. Okay. 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 So uh, maybe a bit further back. I, I'm not sure. Back, I, back, I uh, Aaron, any <coughs> tips and tricks for or still left main standing here? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is the best view to I'll look see. for the thing. So you have to look familiar I'll with the, uh, the stand okay. because some of the stand mm -hmm. is right at right. the marker, like uh, the Abbott stand and the rest of the stand actually is a little bit inside the marker. Yeah. So with this uh, LAO view, is a little bit for shortening. So I tend to sort of pull back, pull back a little bit, slightly more, just in case we miss the ostium, especially in this case, the disease is right at the ostium. Okay. And sometimes if you can't get the, um, <clears throat> uh, sort of the guy not able to visualize it uh, or keep going in, then you have to put a floating wire technique uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to place the stent, yeah. Usually we we're gonna we yeah usually we're gonna try to the eject the match uh, the left main ostium at your cranial view I think it's the best view we're gonna match the upper part upper lip of the left main ostium usually is so we can make sure it's a full coverage of the left main ostium. So you're gonna do a pot now before the ivers I presume. And you so can see the last view, the circum OM still open up. Eh? Can give you a little test. Eh? I think we can just uh, provision. Eh? 
So, so we've been doing the modification of the flotation wire technique with the IVIS catheter since it's already open on the flotation <laughs> wire and have a real-time IVIS yeah. assessment of the stent. So just to be sure, it's quite easy to do, but it takes it, it does take a little bit of effort because you need at least a seven French guiding catheter uh, to allow the uh, floating wire to have an IVIS catheter on it while your stent is on the other system in the same guide. Um, and uh, you know, my colleagues in New Zealand have written a study and published it, and they're within 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters of the ostium. So they're, they're very experienced at uh, doing that. It is possible to do if the IVIS catheter is already open. Yeah, I so think I agree with that because the uh, in fact, come on, so let's see. Uh, because the, we have the side hole. I forget about that. If doing your FFR, keep it up, adenosine will be a uh, challenge. It uh, six song, song bar. In fact, come on. But uh, we can look. Uh, Paria can give us the number MLA uh, on that uh, LAG. Uh, At a bit already that. Uh, I heard that the panelists mentioned about that. This is the mid LED, okay. just distal to the diagonal, mm -hmm. which so, I have the calcification. The so, MLA so. there is 2.2, .2, okay. which okay. is quite, I think, from the anatomy, it could be uh, hemodynamic significant lesions. Yes, uh, what is MLA and LED? 2.2, yes. right? 2.2, yes. 2.2, okay. 2.2 yeah. square millimeter. So maybe probably uh, we can just. Uh, uh, what what do you think? So, uh, I'm thinking just uh, Aaron, a bit. Are you happy with the MLA says significant? Um, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I, I was um measurement of the um the the MLA thing. It it probably depends on the reference size. It, did you have the 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 uh the the plug burden in that area? burden I think it's uh, difficult to measure because there's calcium here and it's difficult um, to uh, know what area of the vessels but if okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, let's go back to life on that I was on that left main to LVG huh? we I just so think the part the... with two four five five uh, 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 eight after the putting the onyx uh, 4.022 and this is the picture of intravascular imaging from the LAG uh, into the left main uh. and I think I have good stand up position uh, and expansion and uh, maybe I can expand a little bit here but this is coming into the first uh, into the left main where the calcium is, and when we have the dog bone and stand, it's just landing just right at the ostium. Uh -huh. uh -huh. What what your guy think? Uh -huh. Do we need to do anything further? Uh -huh. No, I okay, think it looks you... quite good. Huh? What what yeah, does could, it? What could you... You... Okay, could you check it up, the, uh, Andrew? Uh, DW just still wants to see an angiogram. Uh, I think yes. you have a yeah. okay. wire. Okay. So, so, so this is the angiogram after the left main to LAD. And mm. uh, the next question, should we doing KISS in the circumflex? Uh? Yeah, uh, yeah. But the problems, I think, uh, uh, based on the angulation on the previous view, I think it's, uh, it's like a sharp turn. Uh? Mm. And I have the three disease and the osteo in the circumflex. Uh? So I'm thinking if I do the kissing, I might compromise and have enough to put two stent, which mm -hmm. in this case I plan for one stent technique. Uh, so I think- So, uh, it's a, it's so yeah. I, I, I have one major question. Is there any specific region to do not cover the sarcoosteum? Usually in such case uh, we do and uh, you know, up, uh, fully cover the sarcoosteum. We do the crushed stenting and something like that. You know, uh, such like a case and if you skip the Suck ostium after the standing crossover, suck ostium looks quite tight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think I'm, I'm curious about the why do you plan to the miss yeah, I, of the suck ostium? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think on this one, because based on this picture, you can see uh, the true cirque uh, actually go down into the mm -hmm. six o'clock. And we have the obtuse marginal mm -hmm. uh, that uh, along the way uh, uh, into the three o'clock. 
and and we just stand uh, just at the ostium of the obtuse marginal uh, and uh, leaving the uh, uh, osteo circumflex because I'm thinking if I do uh, uh, then it's going to be a very sharp angle uh, to do on this one. Huh? So uh, because again, uh, I think this one is uh, uh, from Medina classification. I think it's one one zero, uh, and and um, uh, we 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 thinking that uh, we just uh, leaving the osteo standing uh, uh, in the circumflex, small circumflex and occlude uh, circumflex and just standing at OM. I think that might be uh, give the better long term outcome. Huh? But now the yeah, osteo could be compromised now, right? right? Yes. Um, how are you going to assess it then? Goran, do you have any uh, ideas about this? I mean, if I guess in the provisional approach, often there could be carina or plug shift and you get a seemingly angiographically tight osteum but timetry flow. Well, what is the guidance here? Do you then need to kiss this uh, and not just finish with a pot, Goran? Yeah, to, to be honest, in this specific case, I'm, I'm not sure that I will recommend routine kissing. Uh, uh, initially, I would probably not start by stenting the uh, obtuse marginal. That gives me more freedom to decide how to approach now. But now we have just two millimeters, probably non-stented osteal circ, and then we have a stent in the obtuse marginal. Uh, result is uh, uh, good. There are two different ways. One is to do FFR in the obtuse marginal and uh, check for functional significance of the jailed ostium of the side branch. The other one is uh, 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 to, to do repeat imaging. Uh, uh, by any of the two, you can be quantitatively more precise regarding the functional significance of uh, jailing ostium of the circ. But we don't have evidence that uh, routine kissing in this situation will improve clinical outcome. And COBIS uh, uh, three at five years did not show any difference in systematically opening uh, ostium of the circ following crossover stenting. The same for Milan, Tokyo registry again at five years, no difference in outcome. So. If we are where we are now with the stenting uh, close to the ostium, good result after pot, uh, knowing that uh, uh, ex elliptical ex expansion, if you use 4.5, you actually elliptically deform the ostium of the circ, which may create uh, angiographic impression of, of significant lesion, but usually the area is preserved. So I don't know if I'm right, but I, I guess I will stop at this point. So Goran said, leave alone. Uh, Aaron, you asked that question. What will you do here? Would you Do you still routinely kiss such uh, lesions? Um, no. uh, th th this cirque is quite oh, small. Is so if it's a big cirque, um, we stand across it, I'll probably routinely kiss. But for this mm -hmm. one, the ostium on the... Uh, epicordal view looks a little bit compromised. So um, to be honest, if you want to do a pressure wire, you know, so, I might as well just kiss, yeah. And how about the uh, LED at this point? Uh, would you uh, just go ahead and I, did, I think this is the view of the LED. And uh, air yeah. is 2.2. Two. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one looked tight, angiography looked tight. The previous right. the Maybe I'm thinking I'm um, just go ahead and uh, prep the LED, standing LED. Uh, DG looks quite small. <laughs> Initially, I thought to do DEB, but maybe uh, I just uh, finish up with the LED and and when we can exchange the guiding and then use the guide with outside hole and then we can do FFR on that circumflex if we have time. Uh -huh. So in other words, we're going to leave you here for you okay. to tell us what you're going to do later. We're going to okay. break off for a few minutes to uh -oh. have Aaron do his lecture first. So we'll give you some peace and quiet, but so far so good. I think you tackled the main lesion. The patient is still very stable. I'm um, actually, I think the left main result looks uh, very, very good. I agree, Goran. I actually favor just leaving the cert alone at the moment and not to uh, invest too much uh, metal there and end up with too much issues. So uh, we're going to uh, break off and uh, we'll have you stop share on the cap lab and we'll go to Aaron. Aaron, please.
Okay, Aaron, you're on full screen. Please go ahead. You're muted, I think. Okay, yeah, full screen now, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, thank you, Jack, for giving me this lecture and putting me in front of the firing squad in this uh, <laughs> uh, um, left main setting session. And um, yeah, so the topic is how to do left main bifurcation without intravascular imaging. So uh, left main PCI without imaging, I mean, giving this talk is going to be very difficult because um, as you heard, um, a lot of the panelists, you know, they can't, they can't do without IVERS uh, for left main stenting, they died, you know, they have to do um, uh, 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 without imaging. So my disclaimer for this lecture, I'm not an expert in coronary imaging, and I'm not a fan of coronary imaging as well. And I, uh, we work in a public hospital in Singapore, where reimbursement is based on roughly on the DRG system. Healthcare is based on a co-payment system. And majority of our patients are subsidized patients and they pay about 15 to 25% of the cost and the rest of the cost, whatever devices we use is being absorbed, uh, being paid by the, by the hospital. So without doubt, intracurrent imaging uh, during left main PCI improves our understanding of the lesion pathology, optimize PCI procedures and possible improved outcomes. The values of intracurrent imaging is, include lesion assessment for severity and morphology, uh, the reference vessel diameter, lesion length, stent expansion, and also assessment of complication. Now, the question now is whether intracoronary imaging is a must-have or nice to have. So um, the ad adaptation of intracoronary imaging in the real world is still very low in many countries um, due to the availability of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the equipment, cost, and time, and expertise. And some will say that there is no convincing evidence that in left main stenting, um, uh, uh, intravascular imaging is, uh, is, is beneficial. So even in a, in a large left main randomized trial, um, a PCI versus C, C, uh, CABG in the XL, not all of the patient actually had, um, uh, had the pre and post uh, 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 intravascular imaging and normal trial as well. And um, the Rolex trial is mentioned by uh, Goran uh, unfortunately, this is not randomized trial, the angel guided uh, versus uh, I, uh, image guided the PCI. So uh, in the land of the blind, the one eye man is king. And obviously if you have, uh, can see the vessel, obviously it's advantageous. Yeah, my personal view is that I disagree not with the benefit of intravascular imaging in left main, but to mandate them for every patient, uh, left main patient. It should be used, I think it should be used as a fine tuning or valid, uh, as a, to fine tune or validate your judgment, not just follow sort of uh, whatever measurement that you have uh, from the IBUS without your own uh, sort of um, uh, thoughts and decision to, to select, the, to assess the size of the vessels. So those who are must have on uh, 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 intravascular imaging, basically, um, that they have lots of money. I mean, the healthcare system may be pay, may, may pay for it or the patient may pay for it. And uh, they have, may have a lot of time, maybe low volume and also very tolerant lab staffs and also wives as well. Um, those who are blind or lack confident without the IVERS, uh, without IVERS, they just couldn't do uh, the, the left main stenting uh, uh, normally. So some are because of personality, they're obsessed, type B personality, have to make everything uh, pretty, yeah. So, so, yeah. so what does the guideline say is actually, it's only a 2A uh, recommendation to assess the severity of unprotected left main and also 2A uh, for, for uh, optimization of stand implantation. So that is mainly for CTO and long lesions. And for left main, uh, optimized unprotected left main again is 2A. So IVERS guidance for left main PCI has uh, never been formally investigated in a randomized trial but registry data suggests improved outcomes. And this is all shows that they are uh, for all cause mortality, cardiac death, stent thrombosis, MI, and TRR, all in, in this meta-analysis. So some of the uh, non sort of left main study ultimate trial, and also the, um, um, the, 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 uh, the renovate complex PCI, all show that in, in, in a normal uh, sort of general PCI left main, uh, the IVERS is beneficial, sort of have some 
um, uh, disadvantage as well that um, uh, the success rate is the same, but you use have more procedure time and contrast volume as well. So the outcome, uh, 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 sort of primary outcome is a uh, composite sort of uh, outcome is 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 beneficial. But you look at the individual endpoint, uh, there is none of them actually reach significant. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, sort of benefit. And uh, uh, so the, the problem is whether it is cost effective to use IVERS for every patient, because if you, as for this uh, trial, that out of 100 patients you use, probably only uh, 5.4 minus 2.9, uh, only less than two, uh, 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 three patients actually benefit from the use of intravascular imaging. So the Renovate Complex PCI, again, it shows that it increased uh, volume of contrast as well as uh, uh, procedure time as well. But it does show that um, there is uh, some benefit in this case, sort of death from cardiac cause. With the rest, there's no significant benefit. So how to get away, uh, not with murder, but without IVERS. Uh, first, how to assess lesion severity. Um, I mean, you can use uh, stress imaging or pressure wire to assess lesion severity as versus the IVERS criteria, because IVERS criteria is quite variable. Uh, the criteria that, that make left main significant 4.5 and you know, 6, these are average of all the, you know, the, the study and individual may, may have different variation. How to assess lesion morphology? Mainly is assess severity of calcium. Uh, my philosophy is I use NC balloon to assess the severity of classification. If the balloon cannot cross, then you have to roll the blade. If the NC failed, then I will use a story balloon uh, followed by, uh, if it's failed again, OPN, and now we have IVL uh, for, for severe calcification. Atherectomy, I will use as a last res uh, resort, not result, limited uh, due to the large uh, left main size, that it, except for maybe the orbital, uh, maybe helpful in, in the left main cases. So uh, nowadays, uh, either the rotor regrets, either is, there's no or less rotor regret now with new devices, especially the OPN and the IVL. So vessel size can be guided by angiography or using QCA, which QCA is uh, known to sort of underestimate the, the 0.5 millimeter size of the true lumen. And you can use a guider and also the balloon to size the, um, the, the vessel size. And lesion length uh, can be uh, easily measured by the balloon length and also use the wire markers, uh, the 30 millimeter radio opaque segment to measure the length. So this is uh, using the guide to estimate the left main size. This is six French. As you can see, this side, left main probably is a 4.0 size, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, left main. And I will use a 4.0 or even 4.5 to, to gently dilate uh, for, for, for pot in this, uh, this patient. And PCI guide wire to estimate the lesion length. Uh, this is one of the example non left main uh, measurement to estimate how long the, the, the lesion is and the, the length of stand that you can use. Uh, this is the LED lesions here. So uh, optimization of the stand can be guided by adequate um, balloon expansion on the angiography with, um, without significant under expansion or waste of the balloon. Post dilatation with a uh, slight oversized high pressure balloon within the stand is a must because um, uh, Colombo has shown us that even a well, um, uh, well opposed, uh, sort of very well uh, angiographic results, doesn't mean that the stand is, uh, is well opposed. So post dilatation with high pressure balloon, either same size or slight oversized is, is a must. I, I do it for every patient. Stand boost, stand boost subtract can be used to assess stand expansion and also depends on the selection of stand as well. Some of the stands are more radio opaque than other. And also um, um, later on, the, the stand expansion limit is quite important as well. So assessment of complications, uh, to me, is quite simple. If it's not obvious on angiography, it is usually not clinically significant. So this is stand boost and sample subtract that you can use to assess whether the stand is uh, uh, expanded. In this case, um, uh, on the left-hand side, the, the, the stand is quite well expanded. And this is uh, to see whether the stand is undersized um, in the left main. Uh, the stand boost subtract can sort of tell you that the stand actually is at the side of the wall, uh, vessel wall. And you can use a balloon expansion to decide whether uh, the, the, the lesion is well expanded. For the first on the left hand side, the osteo LED, there's a calcification on top of it. The balloon is not so well expanded, so higher pressure may be required. And on the other view, the balloon uh, is, is quite well expanded. So the maximum stand expansion of, uh, of the stands that, that you use is important. 
because um, you don't want to undersize it and then you realize that you have to, you know, uh, uh, a maximum can only expand to 3.5 and you actually realize that actually the, the, the vessel size is 4 or then you, you will uh, disrupt the, uh, the stand architecture. So always have this uh, list of um, uh, maximum expansion limit of all the stands in your lab so that you can uh, uh, make reference. And also there is dedicated stands designed for left mean PCI. Um, the, the three of them are Resolute, uh, Synergy, and uh, also, um, yeah, the Resolute and Synergy, the Megatron. And not only the, um, the maximum expanded uh, cell limit, but also the side branch diameter. In this case, this is an Onyx uh, that you can expand, especially when you do a culotte. Um, imagine that you, 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 the LED is 4O and you put the stand in the, um, uh, in the circ and the, the the side branch diameter is less than 4 or then you may have a, a restriction at the at the uh, at the at the stand structure. Yeah. So I'm going to just show you a case, and this is to alert viewer that um, uh, the the content could be distressing, offensive, or uh, could be traumatizing for some uh, individuals. Uh, uh, due to um, so this is a case of 60 year old uh, man with um, end stage renal failure and a lot of uh, peripheral disease. Basically, uh, came in with um, uh, out of hospital collapse in uh, uh, a few years ago, and PCI done to left main to LED ICD implanted and presented with heart failure again, EA for twenty five percent, pretty similar to um, the case uh, done today. So this is a left main lesion. The cert is uh, subtotally occluded. The LED um, uh, uh, there is an instant stenosis of the uh, left main stent. The caliber of the LED looks pretty good. Um, distally, uh, quite calcified lesion as well. And this is a RCA lesion, which is a, a CTO, which is <laughs> very similar <laughs> to the case today. Um, so it was uh, initially referred to surgery, patient refused, and then uh, some complication developed and the patient agreed, and then but the refused by the surgeon because of poor LED target and um, extreme high risk. So decision for high risk PCI. So in this case, I, I elected to, to open up the RCA first. So RCA was, uh, was, was open up uh, proximally with, um, with, with a stent and distally with a, with a DEB um, uh, uh, without um, intravascular imaging. So um, the strategy for left side, um, whether this is a two stent technique, uh, whether uh, imaging is required, me mechanical support or provisional versus two stent technique. So this patient actually had a IBB put in because he had a non-sustained VT um, uh, um, um, uh, a few days before. So we proceed with this um, PCI um, with the IBP support. So this is um, the angiogram uh, before the PCI. So the CERC uh, is a subtotal occlude, occlusion. So it was wired with the uh, field XTA uh, with the microcatheter. Uh, it was uh, fortunately cross uh, and then a balloon uh, can cross 1.5, 2.0, 2.5. So I decided from the angiogram, the, um, the, um, the size of the, uh, uh, the cert is about 3.0. So we, um, we put a 3.0, 15 DS from left main to cert, and then post dilated with a 3.5, 15 NC balloon, and then crush with a 3.0 in the LED, pop with, um, this is a 3.0, and then pop, uh, do a first kiss, a pot and the first kiss, and then the uh, LED stent. Um, I estimated the stent uh, is uh, the left means at 4 0, so 3 5 stents in the LED, uh, osteo to the uh, LED. Uh, overlap, uh, obviously, overlap with the, uh, with the uh, second layer of stent and pot with the 4 0 12 to high pressure, and then the um, final kiss, and then final pot. So, this is the final results. Um, um, I, 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 I would think that, um, uh, that this result is satis satisfactory and I don't think there is anything endographically for me to, 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 to optimize. Um, um, so, yeah. So I just skip the second case. So just come to, um, the, the thing. So, so I think, um, when we first started doing left main standing, when early phase as a fellow, I think you should, um, when you first start, have to use uh, 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 intravascular imaging pre-PCI to guide selection and, no, and also using uh, post-PCI 
for, for checking for optimization expansion of the stand. But when you become more experienced, the intermediate phase, sort of you train yourself to, to assess, uh, 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 to be confident in assessing the stand size and lesion length using angiography alone, uh, but using imaging post PCI to validate your initial selection. Yeah, once you get confident, you become advanced, you can use um, um, uh, in, uh, intravascular imaging uh, selectively um, uh, use of the in, in left main stenting. So for me, for left or codominant coronary system, because it's, it's so important that um, the, 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 the stent is, uh, should be well uh, optimized, I would use a uh, uh, intravascular imaging and large left main size, it is less accurate to estimate the correct size for if the left main is like 5 or 5.5. So I would use a, uh, I would use a, a, a intravascular imaging to help me to guide the size. And when osteo lesion of the, uh, either the left main LAD or cert is in doubt to um, uh, whether bifurcation is a two stands and it required, I would, uh, I would is yeah, helpful. Instant risk stenosis to understand the um, mechanism and also uh, when complication happens or we're not sure what's going on. So this is um, uh, articles by Dr. Bates, Eric Bates. Um, this is a, a, a vice chair of the previous uh, PCI guideline writing. So one of the, he's, he's retiring. So he wrote these articles and uh, he said that um, uh, one of the tips or uh, sort of a pearl that he gave uh, to the younger generation is don't overuse intravascular imaging and left ventricular support device. The excellent interventional cardiologists can do most procedures without them and overuse does not make you a superior interventional cardiologist. So in conclusion, in left main PCI, there is no randomized trial. The recommendation of IVIS use in, in just for PCI is a class 2A. Although um, registry did show that there is um, uh, um, uh, good outcomes, better outcomes with the IVIS, but um, we've been wrong before with the culprit vessels and non-culprit vessel PCI, we're wrong. Uh, and also with the, um, you know, thrombuster, uh, uh, the, the aspiration, thrombectomy, like, we, we do have surprises when really there's a, uh, the, the real randomized trial coming, uh, 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 doing it, yeah. So without doubt, IVERS give a, a lot of information. Uh, it leaves out uh, guesswork, especially important in left main PCI as a complication, complication are less forgiving. But with time and experience, I think operator guesswork can become more accurate and sometimes seeing too much may not be a good thing. So we experience and good PCI technique, the use of IVERS in left main could be used uh, selectively, not all in, not in all patients. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Aaron. Sorry to make you give such a difficult talk, but I really enjoyed that. Uh, although I close my eyes when you talk about a lot of the cases. Uh, can I get some comments from my panelists uh, to Aaron's talks and lectures? Uh, do you agree with him that experience will overcome the need for intravascular imaging, for example? Uh, DW, you're, you're ready to say something? Yes, uh, absolutely. So in Asa Medical Center, in the, over the last 15 years, we do you know, 100% imaging guided PCI, especially on the uh, complex PCI, including lab main and bifurcation and uh, even CTO PCI. So, I think it is, is a, uh, the, especially for complex PCI, imaging guided PCI, they should be done. And the many, many, many data is uh, absolutely demonstrated, even in the this year, New England Journal of Medicine renovated the complex PCI trial shows the imaging guided PCI is, uh, shows a much better outcome compared to NGO. Guided PCI. And uh, if you do imaging guided PCI, we got uh, many, many information. It's absolutely helpful to do, uh, you know, optimize the procedure. Also, as you mentioned, Dr. Goran and it is an uh, ESC meeting and the uh, many nice uh, imaging guided PCI trial, Illumin 4 trial and October trial, uh, the targeting for bifurcation region. Also, our Octopus trial. OCT versus IVUS for, uh, you know, all common patient will be presented the hotline session four, and uh, that would be more, provide a more compelling evidence we, why we should do imaging guided PCI in the such complex coronary region. Thanks, DW, a great comment. I think more and more, I think is moving towards that, but we do have a question from the audience. Dr. Anish uh, Harichan is asking, I think this, Question probably goes to Aaron. Uh, what is then the most common left main size of stent and post dilatation limit with NC balloon? 
if you're not using IVERS in Asian patients is, uh, so two parts of it, what, what, what is your common guidance and is there a difference between Asian and non-Asians? Uh, yes, um, I mean, in, I mainly deal with Asian, uh, uh, seeing Asian patients. So the usual uh, uh, um, sort of a left wing size is uh, 4045, uh, this sort of a size. And um, yeah, so. So you will use at least a 3 5 stand, right? And then post dilate with a 4045, depending. Yeah, correct. And, and if it's sometimes left means a 555. Uh, uh, of, of course, of course, if you, you, you use your, like I said, you use a 4 to dilate and then you look at the left main size and the 4 is obviously there is, you know, discrepancy. So then you have to upsize it. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously uh, you, add, you, yeah. So <clears throat> my, my saying that you said that, that you, you, you um, it's like Colombo when they, they, they did this, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the short, short DBT, he used the IVERS to, to, to document that the stand is not well expanded, but with, Almost post dilatation to all the uh, or PCI stand. Now we don't routinely use to 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 check for you know post uh, whether stand is well expanded or or, or uh, because most of the time we routinely use post dilatation uh, balloon to, to open up. So um, I think um, what we can do is it says that that is is good to improve your judgment that you know before you 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 um, uh, uh, you you sort of use the IVERS, you use your judgment to see how, what is the size and to see whether you're correct or not. Let's say 10 out of 10, you are correct. Then, you know, that means your judgment is, is, is good enough. And for those simpler case, yes, um, I mean, you probably can get away with it. But I mean, for complex cases, I mean, uh, I, would, um, I would, again, like say selective use of, uh, of, of, of uh, imaging. I think, um, um, no question, like like I mentioned before, the the one eye man in the in, in the, the blind is a king. You know, it's always better with if you can see. Yeah, but the thing is, sometimes cost issue, time and expertise are, are, are lacking. So uh, DW stated quite strongly his views. Uh, Jelly, you you belong to the younger crowd. Are, are you comfortable in not using intravascular imaging and calling on experience for left main PCI? Hi, yeah, uh, I'm not, I'm not dead yet. So definitely I think imaging for me is still important. Um, I think a lot of post PCI imaging and physiology, basically what we are trying to do is having more objective measures uh, at the end of the process, you know that you've done well. And the reason why left main IVERS imaging, and we know that it's uh, post PCI IVERS is more important than pre, because you want to know that um, when you finish doing such an important vessel like left me, they have a good job. So I think that's um, that's particularly important. Uh, I do also uh, agree with Aaron that there are a lot of factors that may limit uh, use of imaging. Time, money, sometimes you have five cases outside the lab and when you say I'm going to do IVERS and then the cath lab staff looks at you, looks at their watch and you know that yeah, it's a job that you have to get done quickly. So I do um, agree that there are limitations, but yes, if there is a um, uh, chance where I can do it, then I will definitely try to uh, do it in my cases. Thanks. Uh, can, can someone speak on behalf of Aaron or Sydney and Goran? <laughs> well, what, what circumstance would you uh, think that actually imaging even in left main is not required? Is there any, you know, Sydney? Uh, good question. Look, Aaron's done a great job um, giving that lecture. It is a difficult lecture to give in the contemporary environment where I sit very much in Dr. Park's view that almost every PCI should be imaged. And the reason we say that largely relates to how you function. We are guessing, you know, we have given nitro uh, in the arteries to make sure spasm isn't an issue. I remember how, to, how, how I learned this. You do an angiogram, you give nitro, and you hope that you size it with a balloon, get an impression, with a guiding catheter and then make up a size and then put it in and you hope that you're a good job and most of the time if the artery is in that ballpark range the working range you're good but if it's very small it could be small because it's disease or small spasm which is undersizing you just don't even know and on the other hand the left main is the quintessential big artery where a tiny asian lady could have a 6-0 left main and you're putting in a 4-0 stent and so that's the problem and all the junior operators now have been a bit poisoned in the mind, so they're not very comfortable at all with angiographic sizing. They have to image it to be sure. 
not not a bad thing. Now you say, well, can you do a left main stent without imaging? The only way you you're forced to do it is if you have no imaging available in the cath lab. So if you have no imaging available in the cath lab, then you have to do the best possible. And then you have to make sure you give nitro and then you have a big balloon, you inject it, you look at it, you look at the stent result and say, that's the best I can do. Make sure you do NC balloon dilatation, at least one-to-one, -one, if not oversize a little bit to maximize it. And that's the best you've got, but it may still be undersized. My problem is sometimes the left main's eight and there's no stent big enough to touch it. And maybe you, you think it's a five zero, but it's it's a six, an eight. You don't get a stent big enough. So I think imaging, it, particularly left main stenting, and so, we'll see the actual randomized trial data coming up soon. Yeah, sure. But uh, you have yeah, to do I, I, I don't disagree with you. Like I said, if for stents, are, uh, left main size more than five, six, it's very difficult to judge. Yeah, is a left main size three, five, four, or sort of mm. our eyes are easy to, to, to judge with the balloon size and things. Yeah. So if you like, if, if I think that the left main size is eight oh, I, I wouldn't do it without using an image. Yeah. To, to be like. Exactly. I think, I think, I think for the experience operator, that vessel was like, oh, I don't know, that looks very big to me. But, but I think that for all the junior operators, intermediate op uh, you know, range operators, really the comfort's precision. The precision is if you've got imaging, go use it for left main you can debate about the average case where you can probably get away with a very good stent result and we've been doing that for many years so we're relatively comfortable but we prefer imaging um maybe last comment from fauzi um what what is your practice then <laughs> are you uh 100 oh, imaging? Oh. okay jack I think uh doing left main PCI without without intracoronary imaging uh just for special persons for special operator which is very smart and sounds judgments but to all the operator more for like me i have to use uh, to use uh, uh intracoronary imaging to guide in every step of left main bci because too many pitfalls that's going to happen if we are not guided by intracoronary imaging Moreover, if you are doing the left main bifurcation stenting to stent technique, this is a very, very uh, important to, uh, to understand uh, what the image after every step. Otherwise, we are going to be in trouble. The, uh, the intracoronary imaging GIF looks uh, uh, very tempt, uh, um, give us a uh, looks like a very good uh, result, but in turn out, not such a, such a good result. So uh, to me, intracoronary imaging is mandatory before uh, coming the uh, result of Illumian and October trial. So that's, that's very important because after doing uh, left main PCI using intracoronary imaging, that's too many pitfall there. Okay, so again, very strong message there. Goran, last point, then we have to go yeah, back to I the have to play the role of devil's advocate in this case, because uh, if you read the literature and British Cardiac Intervention Society data, in uh, 2014, they used 50% IVUS and OCT for left main PCI, and they clearly showed the benefit. But even after that, the benefit regards uh, hard endpoints compared to angioguidance. And then they increase to 70%, but it's still 70% with clear evidence from the registry that there is a benefit. But overall, uh, in BCs, uh, use of imaging is in the range of 10 to 13%. So we have to work in a real world. And for majority of PCI, we have to admit that nowadays imaging is not really uh, part of uh, everyday life in a real world scenario. Uh, I think there is a benefit. I enjoyed very much the initial discussion from the cat lab today, discussing the plug composition distribution, planning the strategy. I think uh, it's of course extremely valuable. If you use the imaging, you get extra information, but uh, you have to really react according to imaging if you want to achieve the benefit. So, uh, if, if I should recommend uh, 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 
Uh, yes, but uh, in, in a real world, uh, we work uh, more in, uh, in the line with uh, Professor Wong uh, lecture that we have to estimate based on angio for majority of cases. Thank you. Thanks. Again, very pragmatic approach. Uh, um, we'll go back to the CAF lab because I think we have to close out and learn from that case, actually. So can we uh, share screen from Siraj? On, on DW, you have a comment. Please jump in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are back to you, Natawood. Um, Hi, you how are you like doing? Uh, yeah, good, good. Okay, so I think last time when we, uh, uh, before you left, uh, we are extending uh, from the left main uh, to the RAD using provisional stand strategy. Huh? And um, there's some concern about the austere circumflex, but uh, um, initial based on the, I was, uh, there's a MOA on the uh, austere circumflex 40. So I decided uh, based because of the complexity of the case and uh, low EF, um, and uh, CTO of RCA to just do provisional. And usually, if I plan for do two stand technique, I will plan up front. Um, uh, so I go by definition two criteria. And this is a uh, result after we stand in the uh, osteo left mid LED, uh, they have disease in the uh, mid LED and also disease in the diagonal brand. Uh -huh. So um, we uh, predilate uh, based on the IWAS data. There are a lot of uh, calcium uh, in the mid LED, uh, superficial calcium uh, with the angle more than 180. And the sizing of the uh, LED is about 3.0, uh, which is um, um, all the way until do that diagonal that start to be 4.0. That's why we put 4.0 and then do the part with 4.5 in the left main LED. So you can see the balloon the dilatations. Uh, I use just NC balloon, but I keep my mind, if balloon NC is not good, then I may go with the cutting balloon. Huh? And um, then we wire into that diagonal, but we thought initial plan to do DCB in that diagonal, but we thought it's uh, too small. So we just leave it uh, and uh, just leave uh, wide open. And then we use 10 booths uh, to position. And then uh, uh, stand in the overlap area. And you can see stand are full op optimized. And now we uh, use the NC balloon to uh, uh, dilate that uh, at the uh, Osteo LED to the left main. Um, and this is the final results. After the stand in the mid LED overlap to that uh, left main. And this is uh, also the uh, picture and the AP caudal view. And then we do intravascular imaging. I think we also very important uh, for doing this uh, as you have been discussed. Uh, intravascular imaging have the role, and you can see uh, from our stepping, we like to get all the information up front before we do anything from intravascular imaging. So we know that what lesion, where we have to prep, what size of stent, and where the landing zone, where to put stent, uh, where to where, and do we need to do any uh, thing up front or not. Huh? And um, uh, uh, this is the final result. Dr. Pariya can uh, show you the intravascular imaging. Huh? And then uh, uh, they have some concern on that uh, circumflex osteum. So we can to, after he's showing the intravascular imaging, we're going to try to put the uh, physiology Y into that uh, circumflex. Uh. Yes. And this is a, uh, the iris of those other standing and post dilatations. There's no uh, distal is dissections. Good. So we want to do at the distal, at any dissection. At the distal fix uh, and yes. then stand expansion and position. Yes, along the mid LED, the stand expansion is look uh, quite good. And from this point, so this you is see the that where calcium. Uh, okay. Yeah, the calcium is over on the 12 o'clock and it's already good expand. And this here is the, where is the MSA, minimal stand area is here, about seven. Uh, millimeters at a mid LED yeah. distal to diagonal, and where is the calcium is? What and is the uh, size of the second stand? 
38. 38. 38. 38. 38. 38. Uh, Onyx 3.038. And then the proximal is uh, in left main is 4.022. Onyx. Uh. And here we, and we also distance. believe in the Dr. Kang data with the post then MSA in the, when we do the left main. So Dr. Boria will show. Uh, we want to get like, uh, so the number is 5, 6, six. 7, 8. So we, we, we're going to want to look at the LED osteum at Minimum of seven, pot at, uh, no, no, six, and then uh, pot at uh, POC at seven, and uh, uh, MSA at the left main at eight. So he can show, I can show you. Yes. So, because this is a predictor of the instantary stenosis. So here, uh, where is this? This is a distal left main, uh, which is uh, 9.3 square millimeters which this part is look uh, under expansion a little bit before Dr. Matawood post dilated it with 4.0 and it's get a bigger and now to 9.3. And at the, the ocean, the left main is, uh, is more expand to 12 square meter. And the LAD, Equalized. the proximal LAD uh, at the ocean, the MSA is about 10, which of the part is good and what we concern about is at uh, the proximal osteum the slip circumflex. It's look like it's come here at the, about uh, eight o'clock here. I think uh, because after the stand, I think the stand there's some clock shift like and the osteo circumflex have a jail. So that's why I don't know what is going to uh, looking for the hemodynamic significance. Okay. So I think based on the, you can go back to that angiogram picture. So based on the uh, angiographic imaging, uh, the left main to LED looks good, uh, confirmed with intravascular imaging. And we get our the MSA as a, a number that we would like to, to have it. Uh, they have some focal spot and that osteo circumflex. Uh, um, uh, so we need to do the FFR on that one. Uh. But this will be most challenging part on the case. <laughs> Hopefully, I can. Because uh, when I do the wiling in that uh, circumflex, because it's a uh, circ true circ is occluded and it's a big turn to that obtuse marginal. With the Qiong, I still have some difficulty. And now I have to cross the sense strut and get to another strat to get the Y in. So hopefully I can finish on time. Huh? Um, normalized deployment? Yeah, yeah. Oh, normalized may die. Okay. About the percent of expansion, the mid-LAD expansion was about yeah, zero, ne nearly 100% compared to this tall reference. And at the left main, actually, because we have no uh, good normalized. reference of the left main diameters since the pre I was so, but compared to the proximal part, I think we can get about nearly 80% of the stand expansion at the distal left main, which have a lot, a lot of burden of power. I think this is, I think it's just acceptable. And, uh, so I would like to ask DW, is this acceptable? Yeah, yes, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think there is a circle Austin is uh, after removing wire is a much, much better than before. So I guess FFR would be more than 0 0.8 uh, would be, you know, uh, the, the limit alone would be okay for such case. Yes, Sorry. leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> so can I, can I say I, leave it alone? Uh, DW say leave it alone. Jelly, your comments? Uh, I wanted to ask um, the panelists and maybe the operators, in such a case, if you have to bail out, because the angle is quite narrow, it doesn't look quite good for T, but there's also a very big mismatch for Q lot. What would be the uh Bella strategy for 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 that um that will be suggested? Uh, Goran, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. First, initially, as I said, I would not start by stenting OM. Now, even if you have half a millimeter protrusion from marginal you have struts which are interfering with the wire. So you have to uh, really be uh, very perfect. 
you have to be persistent trying to go first into the circ and then uh, switch into the marginal branch. Uh, strategy is always the same. If you are able to cross this strat, then tap with minimal protrusion is a mandatory uh, metallic short no, carina uh, compared to, as I, uh, I agree with you, culotte oh, because of discrepancy in vessel diameter. It's not a choice, so we divide the tear no. tap. And the extent of protrusion depends on possibility to cross through a distal strut. If you are really distal, you partially scaffold the ostium of the circ with 10 struts, and then protrusion is minimal. But from clinical perspective, this short metallic neocarina in the left main does not have influence on negatively influence uh, clinical outcome. Uh, Aaron, Just to really get the uh, uh, intravascular uh, physiology into that, uh, it's quite challenging. I have to first, uh, I think when we do this, uh, I change the guiding catheter because you need to be standardized uh, because information is important. So I change the guide from side hole with outside hole, and then I, I select to do the with the uh, uh, resting index with the IFR. Uh, and, um, and then we normalize. Uh, and this is the, uh, I think when we uh, when we discuss, we just successfully uh, able to cross it. Huh? Excellent. Can you show us a hemodynamics, please? Yes, uh, I think yeah. we we have to uh, zoom in and to look at on the monitor. So which device this is this? Uh, uh, IFR. Huh? This is the Philips Volcano IFR. Yes. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, eagerly waiting your IFR. Uh, Aaron, you want to predict the results? Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, he, um, I mean, it's cheaper uh, to. Uh, I did not see. Uh, it's, it's cheaper for me to just do a gentle kiss than putting a FFR wire in. Yeah, but in this case, uh, it, it goes to confirm our suspicion. You probably don't have to do anything okay. else beyond the. Adenosine. Adenosine has it. So we keep some adenosine to uh, confirm both FFR and IFR. DW, do you have any last comments before you move on? Yes. So I think IFR would be uh, the okay. FFR, I think uh, more than the zero point. You know, FFR usually the uh, depend on the uh, the amount of jeopardized myocardium and the suck is not so looks like not so big and the jeopardized myocardium is not so big and I guess uh, FFR absolutely more than zero point eight and the FFR more than zero point eight we we, we we yeah absolutely we should be the medical therapy alone for that region. Um, so I think based on this information. Um, uh, FFR is, uh, is uh, a little bit low, but still above 0 0.8. Uh, it's not perfect, but IFR also as good as Dr. DW have said uh, with this. Uh, and I think uh, as we have been discussed, uh, how complex if we have to do this. So I think if we want to upfront to stand, I, I like to do it at the beginning. I like, I love the crash, but again, because of this uh, complex uh, uh, situation, uh, uh, CTO, RCA, LB dysfunction, I like to do as simple as possible. And I think based on this, I'm going to leave the circ as uh, it be, and then I will bring him back uh, uh, to do the uh, RCA CTO. Uh -huh. And I think we, we will leave this. Uh, uh, we can do the uh, you know, angiogram that we have. Uh -huh. And I think that should be um, adequately uh -huh. uh, demonstrate uh, uh, um, how uh, challenging and how imaging and planning uh, to tell us. Uh, I think we can do final two angiogram and why do you comment? Uh, and to pull back, why? Uh, uh, validate. Thanks, Nata Wood and the team for showing us even the physiology ending there. That was actually very nice. Uh, you're going to show us a final angiogram before we close? Right, we do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, 1.20. So we make sure that uh, we know dipping. Okay, we do final angiogram. Oh, I don't dissect. <laughs> <It's a> complex. <laughs> <I'm been> violent. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. You do three picture. Huh? We now are off balloon pump at the moment. Huh? Okay. That's good. Huh? Pump, huh? Okay. And then. Uh... Yeah, very nice. Excellent. Congratulations, uh, Nata Wu. Oh, thank you. Uh, on, eh? yeah. a a any last teaching comments uh, from my panel? Anyone with any comments or questions? If not, uh, can I get uh, uh, Nata Wu to summarize your own learnings from this case for our audience? Okay, so uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, first, I have to thank uh, all the moderator and panelists. Uh, to help us uh, and thinking together and working as a team to do this ch complex challenging case. So I think this is uh, through uh, chip PCI. Uh, being patient have like uh, when you do PCI, uh, you need to identify that first. And uh, when we see this case uh, as a replacement from the first uh, case we have, we, we have some doubt because of the uh, EF is 20. But uh, as you can see how important of GDMT and usually when the patient with the ischemic cardiomyopathy with the CVIV dysfunction, I think that is very key before you do PCIs. I think you need to optimize this medication then make them more tolerate. Mm -hmm. And even though EF is improving, uh, you still can see that um, uh, uh, when we uh, I was on the circumflex, a VP a little bit drop on the balloon pump, but it, it still make it a lot easier compared to we don't have the GDMT. And then um, strategy, uh, I think uh, we have been discussed, uh, this case, uh, CBG, definitely a first choice based on the, uh, you need to get the calculate all the score and then discuss with the patient and put the patient preference and uh, uh, your expertise and competence together. And then uh, once uh, we get that final plan, uh, what we plan to do, I think uh, doing left main uh, intravascular imaging is very important. So I think uh, we will look from the angiogram, we have plan A, B, C, D, but based on uh, intravascular imaging, sometimes I have the case like this, I plan for provisional stenting, but then we see the calcium in the osteo circumflex and like uh, napkin rings. Uh, so we have to switch to, to stent technique. But on this one, uh, on the osteo circumflex, uh, they have a lot of napkin rings on that uh, uh, proximal part of the OM, but not on the osteo circumflex. And then the uh, challenging angle, so we plan uh, uh, with the definition to try. Uh, we thought that uh, 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 provisional stand strategy uh, could be done. So um, OM is big enough. So we, we want to do that first before we do provisional. And then decision kiss, not kiss. I think it could be routinely I kiss all the time. But on this case, uh, because if I kiss and I dissect, I may have end up with two stand, which I don't plan at the beginning. So I leaving the kissing uh, balloon at the ostium at uh, not to do it. And then uh, we uh, uh, do the case based on intravascular imaging, and then we do post intravascular imaging to see uh, how optimum the outcome. And then we can integrate the physiology uh, in this uh, lip circumflex. So I think that all the uh, learning point uh, and, yeah. and, and thank you uh, and uh, to, uh, to give us opportunity to do the live case at the APSC. No, I'm, I'm very impressed, uh, Nata Wood, with uh your team, uh, as well as uh, Sirish Church Hospital for this wonderful case. Great teaching points. I I really enjoyed all your learning points. Um, first uh, and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, the audience for staying back for the full two hours. Very engaging uh, your live case. My faculty for giving those talks as well as the wonderful comments and tips and tricks. Uh, a few observations here to just uh, summarize. I think we still are very clear that we're recommending bypass surgery for this group of patients with left main multivessel disease, poor ear diabetic as a class one indication, I think the patient should be offered the indication. I'm very impressed of how you optimize with the best optimum medical therapy and works quite well in this patient to prepare him to this stage. At least the EF improved and it was actually safer for the patient when he actually landed on the table for this elective PCI. I agree with Goran, I'm not 100% certain about the need for MCS uh, support. Uh, for this particular elect, semi-elective case. So I, I think that's up for more evidence uh, gathering. Goran presented very well 
the data supporting a philosophical provisional stepwise approach. I think in this case, with Medina 110, it was actually perfectly demonstrated that uh, provisional approach worked extremely well. I think the other point, I put Aaron through a very tough uh, presentation on uh, no intravascular imaging for left main complex PCI. And, and, and he had many, many good points, but I hear from the rest of the panel in this day and age, everyone is very reluctant. I will not be surprised after the evidence is released soon, whether we're moving closer and closer from a 2A to a one mandatory type of recommendation soon in the future, especially for left main uh, PCI. But we do need data, so we're looking for the evidence to be released next month. Goran is gonna update us soon again, uh, particularly about guideline changes if it's due to happen. And we did see that the intravascular imaging did help the team make the procedure much uh, smoother and more accurate and more precise like what Sydney uh, mentioned particularly in the mid segment where you um, where you actually did find another uh, likely physiologically significant lesion in the mid LED and your adjudication that also so was disease free I and with that confidence with the port I probably had left it but you did reinforce and clearly show negative physiology in that angiographically borderline uh, lesion in the osseal cell. So again, many, many good teaching points here and well demonstrated. Uh, lots of stuff, chip, left main PCI, physiology, imaging, and good teamwork from uh, you guys. So congratulations uh, again. Thank you very much uh, to everyone. And uh, thanks for attending today's uh, webinar from APSC. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Thank See you very much. Uh -huh. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Congratulations. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, all the best.